Hey, what's up guys? Crazy here and today what I have for you all is another video guide that should help you out in your journey. So let's jump right in and of course also a big shout out to Instant Gaming for sponsoring today's video. Instant Gaming is a website that sells games at some of the cheapest prices you can find around. So if you also enjoy cheap games then go ahead and check out the link down below for some really awesome discounts. Now let's start things off with one of the best ways of getting blueprints as well as tech modules later on into the game and that is of course by the using of manufacturing facilities. To get manufacturing facilities it is actually really easy and all you need to do is to go to the cartographer NPC on any space station and purchase planetary charts that read secure sites of interest. Once you activate one of these they will reveal a manufacturing facility so go ahead and travel to it but don't yet land with your ship. Instead use the ship itself to blast down the doors so you don't have to deal with any of the sentinels. Once you do that you are free to land your ship go in inside really quickly and once you get there just complete the puzzle and eventually you will be rewarded either with a tag module that you can quickly install in your inventory but it can also happen for you to be able to unlock either the possibility to get nanites or even learn actual blueprints and some of the blueprints you can win or earn are for of course the product recipes and you can get these for the components and devices as well as for the valuable products so if you miss something such as let's say a so sodium diode, an oxygen filter and all that kind of stuff, you can go ahead and unlock this by just using this manufacturing facility and using one of the factory override units that you just got by unlocking it. And it's a pretty easy process, if you do this correctly you will never even encounter any of the sentinels because it's going to be a nice, clean and silent operation. The next one on the list is an all around amazing money making method as well as a great way to stack hundreds if not even thousands of the basic materials in just just minutes and that is of course by destroying the cargo pods on the NPC freighters that randomly spawn in any system. Once you come across one of these fleets go ahead and only attack the freighters themselves or should I say the freighter cargo pods. If you do this you will get hundreds of gold, of cobalt, chromatic metal, silver and you will never have to worry about decreasing your standing with any of the factions. But do keep in mind that if you attack the small floating cargo pods such as these, if you attack them, even if you don't destroy them, you will have your standing decreased with the current faction that is in that system by one. So that is quite a lot, just attacking a few of these can quickly decrease your entire standing in just a few minutes. So pay close attention, only attack the big freighters and take down their cargo pods. There's going to be a number of these freighters, so that means at least a few thousand of each of these materials, which quickly equates to millions or at the very least thousands of materials you can use in crafting. Eventually you will have some sentinel ships attacking you, so what I suggest you guys doing here is to never engage with them, don't even attack them, don't destroy them, because one or just two of these sentinel ships are definitely manageable. If you get to five stars, it's going to become a little bit more complicated. Once that is done, you are free to run away either to the closest planet or to the space station and congratulations you just ran away with a few million worth of units. Coming up next, crafting glass in the Beyond update is now easier than ever before. No longer will you need to manually travel to frost planets, collect frost crystals and then plant them in your base. Instead, there is now a much easier method than ever before and that is of course by using silicate powder. You get this resource automatically by simply using your terrain manipulator and by simply digging up holes or destroying terrain you will get a number of these really easily and chances are there's at least a few hundred of these in your inventory with without you even knowing. So don't sell them, instead bring them to your refiner and refine these into glass. The ratio is 40 to 1 which means that you will need 40 silicate powder to refine it into one glass but it is definitely worth it, you can use it in a number of base building parts such as glass windows, glass tunnels, glass ceilings but do keep in mind that the price of glass has pretty much crashed because it is now so easy to craft it. Moving on, this might be obvious to many, but by far the best way to collect resource deposits is to make your terrain manipulator beam as small as possible. To change the size of your beam, you can use R and T on your keyboard or the equivalent on your controllers. Once you do this and change it to the lowest beam possible, you can collect a lot more resources than if, for example, you went with the biggest one. So whenever you find a deposit, make sure you first 
take that beam and make it as small as possible and only then start collecting the resources. Yes, it will take a little bit more time than if you just went in with the biggest available, but you're going to get a lot more than that, probably even double than the amount you would get with the biggest beam available. So to give you an example, this gold deposit over here gives me over a hundred gold by simply mining a part of it with the smallest beam, but if I went in and used the biggest beam available and just collected the rest of the entire deposit, which is more than I just collected, it would give me barely like 20 or 30 gold. So that is way lower than that, which is why I definitely recommend you guys go ahead and use it like I just told you. Moving on, save beacons and save points are much more important than you actually think, and you should definitely make use of these, especially if you're trying to do something new and want to revert to your previous save. So there's two types of saves in No Man's Sky. There's the auto saves, which is pretty much everything you can think of whenever you reach certain points in the game, whenever you teleport to somewhere or whenever you exit your ship, the game creates an automatic save. This is also the type of save that always gets overwritten, so you can't backtrack it, you can't go back, you can't restore it, it's pretty much gone once it is overwritten. On the other hand, the beacon and the point create manual saves and you will want to have these because these are more useful. Typically speaking, manual saves cannot be overwritten by automatic saves. So what this means is that once you place down a save beacon and saved your game, you can only overwrite that file if you do another save with the same beacon or with another save point. So for example, if you enter and exit a ship after using a save beacon, that is going to create an additional save file that is not going to overwrite the previous one. And this is going to be definitely very useful if for example you want to scout ahead in the next systems and still want to have a previous save file to go to or for example if you want to progress through the main mission and eventually get stuck somehow or maybe there is a bug if you used a save point or save beacon in advance to make a manual save you can go back to it and never fear that it got overwritten unless you use the same devices again at various points you might encounter some game breaking bugs and you will want to have one of these save files to go back to Moving on, if you happen to have a fleet, don't forget to drop on your frigates every now and then because more often than not they will give you certain rewards such as units as well as basic elements. This is most common with the exploration frigates as well as with the ones that deal with trading and they will more often than not give you certain things such as magnetized ferrite or even chromatic metal and they can give you like a hundred of these which are very useful especially in the early game. So if you have at least a few of these frigates, go ahead, land on them and the captain will quickly prompt you with some of the new rewards you can get. Moving on we have something that a lot of players might overlook and that is the fact that animals are now a much better resource than ever before and you can actually make a ton of money if you happen to land on a planet with a lot of fauna. So uh, these can drop meat and each creature that you kill can drop about 8 pieces of meat and all of these can sell for quite a nice profit at the space station. I believe that if you get like 50 of these they sell for about 40,000 units and you don't need to kill more than 8 creatures to get a full stack of 50 which is pretty nice and yeah this could generally be a good early on money making method to at least put you on your feet. Moving on, I'm not sure how many of you guys knew this but you can actually store multiple planetary charts and it's actually quite easy. You just need different space stations in order to get these and the way you want to do this is to for example let's say you find a system that spawns planetary charts for let's say ancient artifact sites. So if you're eventually going to search for ancient artifacts, you will want to collect some of these and later on if you find yourself in a different space station that sells different kind of planetary charts, such as for example for secure locations or for inhabited outposts and you want these later on, you can go to these space stations, grab a few of these and I would even recommend you guys go ahead and stockpile several types of these as they will definitely prove useful later on into your journeys. Moving on, this is especially true for the new players but oftentimes I'm seeing players spending way too much navigating the quick menu which oftentimes can take quite a little bit of time especially when they're trying to pull up some emotes but many of them actually don't know this and that is the fact that you can actually bind pretty much any of the actions in the quick menu. Anything you can think of, you can quick bind summoning a ship, you can quick bind summoning your freighter or even the emos themselves, changing the camera view and all of that. The way to do this is really easy and what you need to do is simply take a close look at the bottom prompts at 
the bottom. I'm going to exemplify this for the keyboard because I'm not really sure how this works on uh, on the controllers, but it should be pretty similar and you should still have the prompts over there. So on the keyboard, you use control and the numbers from 0 to 9 to key bind any of these actions. So what I did is I key binded the actions that I use the most and these include using the camera, summoning the ship, changing my character view from first person to third person, as well as a number of emotes. So I never have to actually pull up the quick menu and instead just use the quick action and it's so much more convenient, it's so much better and it's so much easier to navigate. Now tell me if I missed anything, tell me if there's anything else that you know, let me know down below and in the meantime also don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe and activate the notification bell and I'll see you guys later.